Hi, I'm Kaylee, a librarian here at Mentor Public Library. And I'm Meg, also a librarian. And welcome to this week's edition of All Booked Up with Kaylee and Meg, where each time we give you different book recommendations on a specific theme. This time, well, it's the beginning of October. There's a little bit of a chill in the air. So we thought, why not turn to one of the more spookier book themes, teen horror. Yes, uh, so we're going to talk about some classic horror type tropes in our fiction here today. And all of the books that we're going to talk about today are available for you through the library, both in physical form and online for free with your library card through Hoopla or Libby. All right, what's your first spooky read? Yes, my first spooky teen read is Don't Tell a Soul by Kirsten Miller. Ooh, good title. Yeah, I know, right? Um, and this has a little bit of all everything classic horror wise. So it's got a little bit of the haunted house, a little bit of the paranormal, maybe some spooky ghosts here and there. So I'm really excited to talk about this one. It centers on a new girl in an old town. Her name is Bram, you know, Bram Stoker, you know. Yes. <laughs> um, and Bram wants to disappear from her old life, her family's past, and from the scandal that continues to haunt her. So she moves to Luth, which is a tiny town on the Hudson River. So she's originally a Manhattan girl, big city, all of that. So she kind of wants to slow it down a little bit, move to this tiny town. And she goes to live with her uncle James. And she used to have these childhood memories of her uncle as being, you know, this very loving, supportive uncle. Um, but it's a little bit different now. Some things have happened in Luke. Among them, Uncle James is working on this giant mansion. And there was a tragedy that happened a couple years ago where the house, half of the house burned down and his wife died. So Uncle James is in grief and he's kind of a shell of himself. But the thing is, there are rumors in the town about who exactly started this fire. And one of the big rumors is that it was his wife's daughter. So his step uncle James's stepdaughter was the one who actually started this fire. And no one knows where the stepdaughter is. So there's kind of a mystery there. But apart from all that, just everyone in the town kind of treats Bram like very much like an outsider. She feels very uncomfortable. And she realizes that in a small town like Luth, stories and gossip, they spread quickly. Um, and it's not long before she's hearing stories about herself that she didn't know, <laughs> like stories spreading about her. And then she starts to hear about this legend of the dead girls. And the dead girls apparently were these three girls who lived in the very mansion that Bran lives in right now with her uncle. And apparently they're still alive, but they're from way long ago. So this is very creepy. And, you know, I'm not usually like horror movie, but horror book for some reason, just, I don't know, it's just even eerier because there's no sound. You have to imagine it all in your head. So mm -hmm. this one definitely gives me the eerie vibes. Yes, it totally reminds me like of uh, We Have Always Lived in the Castle, that classic uh, Shirley Jackson. Yeah, you're telling me about that one. Sounds great. What's yours? Wow. All right. So my first spooky read is actually a haunted house story as well. Oh, cool. Uh, and I think that there's just, there's sort of like a formula to follow for a lot of these. Yeah. And uh, my book is also about a girl uh, who is new in town and <laughs> same kind of vibe. Yeah. So this book is called The Haunted by okay. Danielle Vega. Mm -hmm. And it is about Hendrix, who is a teen girl and her and her family have just moved to this new town. Okay. Her parents flip houses for a living, mm -hmm. and this time they've decided to live in the house that they're going to flip. And things seem good in the new town. And Hendrix had some not so great memories of her old town, so she's really hoping to like make a new start here. And uh, she is quickly making some friends. And then, you know, things in the new house, though, are not perfect. Some, th some stuff is just a little unexplainable, a little bit strange, and the house that her parents have moved them to is actually notorious in town. It's called the Steel House, and Steel House, her friends tell her, is haunted, and years ago, 
a girl was murdered in the house and there's all these rumors that the brother did it but it's never been solved and Hendrix at first sort of brushes these rumors off but then pretty soon she can no longer deny that there's something strange in Steel House she starts to hear these voices and things start to move on their own and even some strange messages coming through and suddenly she is a believer not only that she has decided that you know if seal house is haunted she is going to try to get to the bottom of things and rid the house of whatever or whoever is haunting it with the help of one of her friends who is a neighbor who also has some history with the house Hendrix sort of takes on this haunted house and trying to banish whatever it is that is possessing it. Um, And this book is super creepy um, with uh, all the greatest like horror movie uh, ideas roped into it and those good spook factors, shock value for sure. Uh, The author does an excellent job of describing like the super creepy scenes so you feel like they're right there. I would say this is definitely geared toward older teens um, because it does get a little gory at times. Wow, that sounds intense, man. Yeah, got me on the edge of my seat with that one. (laughs) It's shivering as well. I need a blanket. Um, (laughs) So my next one is called The Mary Shelley Club by Goldie Moldovsky. So this is another one. I had Bram, a Bram Stoker of... (laughs) <laughs> the first one, now I have Mary Shelley. We got classic horror fans here. Mm-hmm. This is a horrific thriller about a mysterious club with an obsession, not with just with horror movies, but maybe enacting them in real life. So, Ooh. yeah. So, third time in a row, new girl, Rachel Chavez, <laughs> is eager to make a fresh start at Manchester Prep. But as one of the few scholarship kids, she's struggling to fit in. So she kind of gets caught up trying to fit in. She kind of gets caught up in a prank that she really didn't want to pull on someone. And it kind of goes bad. And she kind of becomes seen as more of an enemy than, you know, a friend at this new school. Mm. And so she's kind of down because of that. However, she does a catch in the midst of this prank. She catches the attention of the Mary Shelley Club, a group of girls who are horror movie obsessives and they try and this is like a game to them like it's they call them fear tests where they try to cross that line between you know scaring someone and really accomplishing all the worst that they can do it's kind of scary um Rachel gets embroiled in this a little bit and at first she feels like she has a group now she has someone she a group of people she belongs to she actually is a huge horror movie fan herself um and she talks about in the book how like horror movies give her comfort because she's had some traumatic things go on in her past which Mm -hmm. I thought was interesting because you know as I said I don't watch horror movies but I that was an interesting take to see why why it's such a popular genre. So that was interesting to hear her talk about or read her talk about. So as these pranks go on, they get more and more extreme until Rachel finds herself and her club, the Mary Shelley Club, they find themselves being actually on the other end of a prank. They find someone has finally decided to turn the tables on them. And so it kind of pulls a little twist on it and it's definitely intriguing to figure out who is trying to get back at the Mary Shelley Club. I find that so interesting and I, it's just a fun book. A lot of horror movie references, of course, you know, starting with Mary Shelley who wrote Frankenstein. Um, so I just love all the references. I love the interesting pull between peer pressure and, and social issues, you know, with horror and, and all that, mm-hmm. how that works together. So it's just a really interesting book in that way. <laughs> yes. It kind of gives me those sort of like uh, Heather's vibes oh, of the yeah. bad girls group. And, you know, they're yeah. not so nice once you get to know them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, so my next book is called There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie yeah. Perkins. And I chose this one to discuss today because the movie version of this book is coming out this week on Netflix on October 6th. 
And I just watched the preview for it and it is super creepy looking. Um, possibly creepier than the book to me because of the visuals but yeah, yeah. Uh, so this one is coming out just in time for Halloween so read the book watch the movie or watch the movie then read the book perfect yeah. uh, so this is about Makani who is new in town <laughs> to her uh-huh. <laughs> or before that's funny she's uh she's new to this Nebraska town her parents recently sent her from Hawaii to live with her grandmother in Nebraska in this okay. small town and you know it's taken a little while but she seems to be making some friends she has a crush on someone um, and so things are sort of moving forward, except Makani is concerned that if people knew why she left Hawaii, they might not like her very much anymore. And so she has a little bit of a mysterious past there. Uh, so she has this love interest in a sort of untraditional kind of uh, bad boy, Ali, who yeah is just different. He's an outcast. His uh, life situation is different than a lot of the other kids. And he has pink hair. Um, (laughs) But uh, then, so the big thing happening here is that Makani's classmates begin to be murdered in a gruesome fashion. And all of the school is on edge, worried about who may be next and who the killer may be and why they're targeting the students that they're targeting. Especially when some of these students have been killed in their own homes where you're supposed to be safe. Yeah. So I'm gonna leave it at that because there's like a lot of detail and I don't wanna spoil it. (laughs) Um, But the author does a really great job of mixing a sort of like romance plot between Makani and Ali. Uh, as well as like building friendships in a new town, but mixing all of that with a slasher, like slasher film kind of vibe, but in a slasher book. And this one super reminds me of like Scream, where it's, Mm -hmm. you know, the teens are just kind of living their life and then suddenly they're being targeted. Mm -hmm. Uh, So has a lot of that going on. It is definitely an older teen read because it can get very gruesome and detailed in the gore but you know some people like that (laughs) Uh, and you know Perkins this author is actually known for her romances so this was like her first foray outside of romance and I think that's really interesting that instead of going in a different direction she went from like sweet romance novels to slasher romance novels Right. <laughs> I love um, it. But I think it's a good one to read right before the Halloween, like Halloween, especially if you like those slasher films like Friday the 13th, Halloween, right. uh, you know, Scream, those kind of things gives you that same vibe. And, you know, I'm eager to check out the movie version. Yeah, that's a great opportunity to, to catch both at once. I, I love it. Nothing scarier than your own house being a scary place all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. So I totally relate to that. Uh, sounds really good. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for listening to our All Booked Up this week about teen horror. We hope you read these creepy reads and get in the season. <laughs> yes. And we'll see you next time. Happy reading. Bye.